What is up everybody? Welcome back to another video. In today's video, we are back with another episode of Lions Latest going through the latest Detroit Lions news. And this video is going to be short, it's going to be sweet, it's going to be right to the point. That is the plan. There's a lot of things that I could talk about, but I'm going to save it because we're going to go through the All-22 next, take a look and start breaking down this game. I have my notes, but it wasn't through the All-22 version, it was through like the broadcast version. So I'm going to save that. We're just going to hold on and wait for it. There's a lot of things that I can show, but we're going to wait and we're going to go through the All-22. Today, though, I wanted to update some of these injury updates that Dan Campbell gave us today. Really the three main injuries that he pointed out in this last game against Seattle the worst takeaway was probably the health because there were a lot of players that were banged up a lot of players at one point in that game deal with something whether that be St. Brown Aiden Hutchinson I mean everybody was dinged up at some point in that game at one point we thought man are we even gonna have a safety then they came back onto the field Kirby Joseph CJ Gardner Johnson so the Lions are dealing we're dealing with a lot against Seattle but there's really three main injuries that Dan Campbell talked about today as well as one that has just been reported that man, it is it is bringing the mood down. So let's get it started. Welcome everybody to our video. Glad you guys are here. And yes, man, we are back with some Lions news. And now this is not the news video that I want to do, but it just feels necessary because there's so many injuries that we dealt with in this past game to hit on the main injuries and just update what we know so far. I think it's a necessary video to do, especially once this news just broke. And I'm just going to start right there. It's probably going to be in the title of the video. But man, I absolutely hate this. And, and I don't know the confirmation or what exactly is going to take place here. I can just tell you what I've heard so far. C.J. Gardner-Johnson is feared to be out for the year, according to Ian Rappaport. Bleacher Report posted this with a torn peck. Man, I mean, I, I don't even know where really, really to go with this one. This one was pretty shocking. Not expect to see this. We know that he was dealing with a little bit what looked like a hand or a wrist injury in that game, but he ultimately got back onto the field, finished the game. C.J. Gardner-Johnson is tough. Thought what he did to the crowd. I mean, he had people wearing masks to the game. Like, that's the kind of emotional player that you have. And then you talk about his impact on the field. You felt that immediately. You felt that in the biggest moments of that Kansas City Chiefs game. And there were other plays that he made, but in the biggest moments, he came through multiple times there. He had Adjusted in coverage, came up with a near interception, broke up a pass, made plays against the run, and then this past week, once again, more consistency. He drew an offensive pass interference there towards the end of the game, which forced them into a third and 18, and then we got off the field. He played two good games for the Lions, and we kind of know what to expect for C.J. Gardner-Johnson. We, we had some expectations for what he was going to mean to this team, but man, he's been massive. So to get this news is just unreal. I mean, this is just unreal bad luck. I hope that it's not this serious because I don't know exactly what's going on here. That's just the report that is put out there. So hopefully it's not that serious, but it is that is a scary thing to hear that he could be out for the season. Yes, we have depth. I like the depth that we have. Tracy Walker would then just go into the starting lineup likely, and then if he would be the backup safety at that point. I like the depth that we have at safety, no question. But this is massive. I like C.J. Gardner-Johnson actually more at safety than I liked him in that slot role. But Brian Branch has done so well in the slot that it's made sense that they've kind of went that route. But man, I'm just, all I can do is hope. All we can do is hope that it's not that serious. C.J. Gardner-Johnson, he's had to deal with a couple of injuries recently. Not necessarily this. So I guess that could be, you know, a positive. Like it hasn't been the same thing. Last year he had the kidney injury. He missed a few games, came back. That same season competed in the playoffs. Year before he had a knee injury. He's missed some time. I think that had an impact on him maybe not getting the extension or the deal that he wanted this offseason. So this was a great opportunity for him to get playing time, help us a ton, right? Just because he's just a baller in the back end. So just help us a ton, add just a add just an attitude to this defense, right? Give us that third level attitude, right? That people can feed off of. And you could trust that, man, he's just going to make big plays in the back end. It gives you a great tandem with Kirby Joseph. And I thought this past week, as bad as it was defensively, man, those two showed up. So this is just awful. And I'm just going to leave it there because I don't have anything else on it. I'm just hoping for CJ. I'm hoping for us as Lions fans that it's not that serious. But right now, it doesn't sound great. We do have some good news. First off, Big V. It sounds like he won't be going IR on IR. It looked pretty rough, his knee injury. He looked like he was rolled up on on the run play that was stuck behind the line of scrimmage. And on that play, it looked like he was getting kind of pushed back. And then ultimately, that's the running back got up on him because on the backside, he had a, he had a free defender coming after him. It sounds like, according to Dan Campbell, he's optimistic that he won't have to place him on IR. That's what they're hoping. Now, we don't know that for sure, but he's optimistic 
think that he won't have to go on IR, but he could miss a little bit of time with the Lions. Now, in the meantime, we have Graham Glasgow. We know they're comfortable with him. I didn't think he played that great when he stepped in this past week, but at the same time, in fairness to him, we were in more situations that they knew we had to pass than before, so it wasn't the best spot to be thrown into. We also saw the screen. I thought he got a little bit late on that play as well with the defender cutting his face. I thought he got out a tad late on that play, so I didn't think it was the best, but we know they're confident in him. I'm confident in him being able to hold it down as a starter in the meantime. The great news there is that hopefully it's not a super long-term injury because I'm telling you, when we first saw that, I was like, oh, dang. This might, this might be a long-term injury. So hopefully that's not the case. David Montgomery, this is another one of those main injuries. And actually, this one is very optimistic news. After the game, the initial report was it could be a couple of weeks. And now today, according to Dan Campbell, kind of in a day-to-day -day mode, according to Dan Campbell. He said if we don't have David Montgomery, Jameer Gibbs will get more opportunities. But we're going to continue to do things by a committee, which means that I would expect to see Craig Reynolds. I think the biggest thing there is pass protection, right? We saw it step in for Jameer Gibbs. They didn't seemingly want to put him in too many of those spots. And if you notice now through the first two games when they go in shotgun looks, they go offset and they leave their back in. A lot of times they lean David Montgomery, not Jameer Gibbs, for I think that pass protection. And when Dan Campbell speaks on the reliability, I think that's a big part of it. As he said, he was outstanding last game outside of the fumble, which kind of left a nasty taste in your mouth. And we did our stock up, stock down. You can go check out the replay. It's on Bleacher Report. The link is in the community. Definitely go check that out. He was the guy, one of the guys that I looked at and said, man, he was outstanding. It was only the fumble but if you just take that play away and I think it was crucial for the, how the game plan was going to go but he was great outside of that the way that he was running the amount of missed tackles that he forced between the tackles the vision that he showcased the one yard runs that turned into five immediately on a carry out of a pistol look and he still drags it for five more yards Dave Montgomery was running hard he stayed in bounds on the sideline and then he caught a little pass when he was mashed up on Jordan Brooks the Lions went kind of at him a little bit in this game when they spread it out and that's when we saw him deal with a little bit of injury it looked very serious during the game and it was like oh, okay now this is concerning but it doesn't sound like it's maybe going to be that bad I do expect Jameer Gibbs to get more touches and they'll probably just have to continue to expand his role as Dan Campbell said there was some good and there's also a lot that he left out there in the passing game I think and a little bit in the run game as well and of course like we touched on pass protection but he's going to get more opportunities for the Lions and I I'm, I'm comfortable with Jameer Gibbs like I said I think that's kind of a work in progress specifically with some of the vision and some of the usage I think you naturally want to use him in a little bit of different ways than David I think his skill set is just a little bit different so it makes sense but I think the passing game is where he was elite that's where I loved him when we went through the draft stuff and I think what we even saw even with the drop he was still very good in the pass game side of that drop so that was another play that he left out there and then finally Taylor Decker and this seems like a kind of positive update too Taylor Decker dealing with the injury uh, the ankle injury moving and they'll know more in the next couple of days the real question is now can can they get them back for this Atlanta Falcons game because then they have a short week and a short turnaround against Green Bay and a lot of times what we see unless it's maybe like an illness is if the guy's out on this week's game then that short week a lot of times we don't see them come back for a game that's on a Thursday because of the minimized practice time with that Taylor Decker is a vet so I, I don't know that he necessarily needs all of that practice time to play but it is something that we've seen a lot so this seems like a pretty positive update though with Taylor Decker right that, that maybe he's not that far and there is a potential that he does come back this week against Atlanta I thought Matt Nelson actually did a pretty good job wasn't perfect you know there were some things we gave up late as in terms of pressures on his side but I thought there was a lot of good there was some there was some definite good in terms of getting up to the second level run blocking those kind of things it was a solid game we did a really good job I think protecting him as well and I didn't think they had elite pass rushers over there to really kind of take advantage of maybe missing that piece but our ability to stay on top of the chains utilize some pistol move the pocket be very creative stay on top of the chains was probably the biggest thing to me because we weren't put in a ton of those spots and at the same time give him some credit I thought he played pretty well stepping into that right tackle position and then finally we have James Houston who is dealing with a fibula injury and reportedly it was put out there that he could miss six to eight weeks anywhere kind of in that range but it's kind of far out, so we'll have to see what happens there. There's options to explore. He could potentially have surgery, so we'll keep an eye on how serious that gets. I think that one being so far out, we're not really sure where that's going to land with James Houston, but what that means is that he's likely going to go hit IR. He's going to join Josh Paschal, who went on IR this past week, and also Julian Aquora, who entered basically there right after the 53-man roster cutdown. So a guy like that that the Lions could get back could give them some depth. Means probably leaning a little bit more on Romeo, Charles Harris, and I thought Charles actually did a lot of good in this game. James Houston 
Houston is tough as well. Just because of the role I thought that we could play him in this year, you know, and I, what I thought that was going to look like, and I thought we were kind of really figuring out a position that he could get on the field a lot more in. Look at that edge rusher position specifically for the Lions. It's a, it's a lot of guys that, you know, the Romeo Corris, it's the Charles Harris, it's guys that you would kind of feel like you know what you're going to get. So those guys should be able to step in and handle that role. That's why you brought them back. But this is a tough loss just for development for James Houston alone. So hopefully it's not too serious and something that keeps him out for a very long time. But we know that his upside, upside, his ceiling, I mean, it's super high. The guy can absolutely go crazy in a game. So this is another massive loss for Lions just in terms of he gives you such a different presence as a pass rusher where even when he's not hitting the quarterback, even when he's getting blocked well, still just a speed, his ability to just slide across the ground, moves a quarterback at times. If it doesn't necessarily look like he even won that battle, he still can find a way to get himself in a stat sheet with a hurry just by getting super low and with the speed that he has off the edge. Also, that contain ability as well. We saw this past week they got him caught in kind of a wheel route situation with the tight end. He was beat on that play, but that was more so of a really good job by the offense taking advantage of what we were in schematically, and I thought they did a really good job of that throughout the game Seattle did. I thought both offenses did a really good job of that, but they kind of took a page out of our book from last year, and they put him in that spot where he had to carry it vertically. He was beat on that play. That's not the spot that he's the most natural. We talk all offseason about the depth. We like where the depth is at versus year one to where we are now, and it's a big reason I thought we could be very successful this year because I thought there was a lot of overlap in a lot of positions between adding young talent, you know, new pieces, specifically, like, let's just take a look at defense. Like, for example, linebacker, right? You're adding these new pieces, like a first-round pick of Jack Campbell that you would expect to see the field. Well, at the same time, because of the development of a Derek Barnes, now all of a sudden you have really strong depth at that positional group. We're talking about James Houston. You can throw Anthony Pittman, honestly, into that mix. He's not the pass rusher at all that James Houston is, but he was a guy the Lions did keep around. Of course, special teams is part of that, but also because he can play, I think, some of that Sam linebacker role if you ask him to, more so the run responsibilities and a little bit of the underneath coverage drops. So we talk about that depth. Tracy Walker, I mean, that guy's getting paid, right? They paid him big time, and at the time, you know, before this season, we took a look at a lot of those guys that the Lions actually paid. When you look at the winning Lions actually paid these players, they hadn't seen the field, whether that be Romeo Okora injuries, Tracy Walker injuries, Charles Harris injuries. A lot of the guys, they had gotten paid, and then they weren't able to actually play because of an injury. Now, of course, it's not just as easy as like you get back out there that you're the exact same player, but we know Tracy Walker's battling. He's going to stay ready, right? He's he's fighting for that opportunity. This means Tracy Walker's going to get that opportunity. That's why we talk about the depth. You talk about Craig Reynolds. I like Craig Reynolds. I'm confident in Craig Reynolds. We're going to need depth, but I'm confident in Craig. I've seen that. I really want him to back as running back three. I'm confident in him. I think the Lions will add somebody else as well. But with like Tracy Walker, I'm absolutely confident he can hold it down at safety. He played well last year in a very small amount of time that we got to see him before going out with an injury. So this is a great opportunity for him because like I said, he was one of the highest paid players that the Lions had given and out, especially on that kind of extension. And he just didn't get the opportunity. And coming into this year, because you add CJ and you add Brian Branch, there was no spot for him because Branch played so well. It basically kept Tracy Walker on the bench. So this could be an opportunity, but the guy got paid. This isn't like just throwing anybody out there. This is a legit player. And we talk about all this depth and unfortunately for the Lions, it's hitting very early. We know everybody's going to hit with injury at some point it's terrible I'm a huge fan of all of these guys but at the same time when you're talking about the depth this is the game and this is just how it goes you have to have those pieces and I do think at a lot of these spots I'm very comfortable with what we have new additions are of course be added I think for sure at running back probably at offensive line just for your interior depth beyond Colby Sorstel they brought up KO last week so maybe they just keep doing that or add somebody else they have someone else on the practice squad that can play all interior spots as well I think at like edge maybe the Lions try to elevate someone they do have Raymond Johnson the third on their practice squad who you know he's been in the league for a little bit that's a legit player like Raymond Johnson the third could play he had an extremely good preseason so it's an opportunity for all of these guys so for the most part a lot of good news but to just recently get this news about CJ I'm just hoping all that's all we can do is hope at this point we've had things like this come back and then it's maybe not that bad and I know CJ's tough. He's battling. He's not only playing for what can I do this year and for this team, but I got to think there also is that aspect of he definitely wants that long-term deal. And uh, health will absolutely come into play when a team is deciding whether or not they want to give that out. I made a prediction before the season when I bold predictions that the Lions end up extending CJ Gardner-Johnson. Hopefully he can get on the field for his sake. And man, I'd love to see him out there. I, I love me some CJ Gardner-Johnson. And this would be a massive blow to this defense. Hopefully we get a guy like Emmanuel Mosley back soon. That would be big. Have that competition open up between him and a Jerry J. Jacob, this is not great news on Monday night. You know, I was trying to enjoy some football, and I see this, and I'm just sad. But I'm going to leave it right there. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. We'll hope for the best. Thank you, Brad, for watching, and I'm out.